بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء المرسلين على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين دكتور داتو أزمي بروفيسور يونس أجيان دكتور أجيالي thank you very much for the kind introduction thank you very much for the invitation to be here at IIUM for this presentation my initial understanding and expectation that this presentation will be uh, meant for a smaller group of uh, people who will be looking at investments. Uh, now I have a smaller group of uh, people looking at investments and a larger group of students uh, who are in the hall. So it's an honor for me to be here. Uh, as uh, Haji Ali, Dr. Haji Ali said that uh, I did a diploma program in Singapore and uh, we had the blessings of uh, IIUM uh, to run this Islamic banking and finance course in Singapore and I benefited from that. Um, Dr. Azmi was our key uh, lecturer for the entire module so therefore uh, when your teacher asks you to come, you have to come, right? It's, you cannot say no, you put, all, you put aside whatever worldly businesses that we have and teacher is calling, teacher has asked me to be here. So, Inshallah, I'm here. Uh, I, I'm not an expert in this area, so if you think uh, you know this is coming from an ex expertly uh, advice and presentation, then perhaps uh, it may be a letdown to you. Uh, but I come from an experience, uh, from a from background with experience with the people who are in the market, with fund managers. Uh, I work with several fund managers and the exchanges with regards to products. Uh, and some of the products would be structured products and with ETFs. Uh, I have to share with you that there's a bit of bias in terms of these notes and uh, the slides coverage on, uh, on, on the two products. Uh, there's more coverage on ETFs than structured products, okay? Because there are a couple of issues that need to be ironed out uh, and for you know, investment, investors of IIUM, and for the students who are studying capital markets, uh, this will be a bigger sort of a take for you in that you understand what are the issues uh, that ETF operators and issuers um, are facing. Uh, and therefore, it becomes a bit more relevant in terms of your papers and your theses that you are working on. Okay? Now, the first side of the slides um, would be a bit of what are indexes. But before I get to indexes, this is the only commercial slide I have which is uh, the company that I represent. Uh, Dow Jones Indexes, as many of you would have heard, um, is an American-based company. We were part of the Dow Jones company itself, and, and that has now been acquired by Chicago Mercantile Exchange, or CME for short. Uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange is the world's largest commodity exchange for, for some of the uh, commodity trades that take place globally. Uh, and they have acquired Dow Jones indexes as of last year, so therefore we become part of the subsidiary of uh, CME Group. For those of you who are not aware of, CME Group is also a shareholder into Bursa. You have the CME Bursa derivatives, uh, and therefore they are present in Malaysia as well. So I have come from two strategic interests from Bursa CME uh, partnership and also from Dow Jones IIUM partnership itself. Right, now where do we position indexes, right? Indexes from a Dow Jones um, uh, index company point of view, we have classified indexes into different categories, right? You have the traditional equity indexes, right? How many of you don't know what is an equity index? I think it's easy for you to put up. And I'm, I'm happy to take the I don't understand question. So, you know, that's the best way to move forward. Do all of you know what's an equity index? Anyone who does not know what's an equity index? Because if you do not know, ask now. The rest of the slides, uh, you will be following what's happening on the equity markets. Okay? All right, so to make it very simple, for those of you who are shy and don't want to admit you don't know what's an equity index, um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll start from, the, uh, from, uh, from very simple terms, okay? Um, every company that is listed um, is traded on the exchange. And companies that are all traded on the exchange, you may have 1 to 100 to 1,000 to 5,000 companies 
that may be traded on the exchange. So therefore, for you to know what is the health and the pulse of the exchange in terms of companies that are being traded, we work out what we call an index, which is the performance of the trades that take place on the exchange. And you could do a very rudimentary index, which is just take all the companies and then you try and calculate them. Or you can do a much more refined process, which is to take the companies and classify them in terms of the sectors that they are in. So you have industries, you have consumers, consumer companies, you have basic materials, you may have agriculture, you may have financials. So therefore, all the banks and insurance companies will be grouped under what we call financials. The Syme Darby's and all the palm oil rubber plantations will be grouped under, say, your um, uh, agricultural um, uh, subsectors. Uh, and so you have different sectors, right? And once you've done that, you can now do a computation of all the sub-indexes which will give you a cumulative of the index itself, all right? So this is what we call an equity index, right? And traditional equity indexes are basically the conventional equity indexes. Now, since 1999, since Dow Jones introduced the Sharia compliant indexes, we have now placed it under the strategy and team based indexes. Okay? So you could have a standard index which is conventional, and then from there you can have different flavored indexes which we call team. For example, you may have a team of weather and um, sustainability, which is uh, you know, corporate governance and so on. So you can create a team like that. You could create different, different teams, right? So we have classified the Dow Jones Islamic market as a team, and then we put it under that particular um, uh, sort of like a um, subcategory of the index. Uh, we have fixed income and also the alternative asset class. Uh, so Sukuk's and fixed income will all you know, be grouped under this particular index. And we also have what we call a custom index solution. So if you have uh, like fund managers who have got big shops, like say for example, uh, DB, uh, Deutsche Bank, or say public mutual, or you know, CIMB, they may come to us and say, okay, Dow Jones index, can you now calculate for me a particular index? We want to now launch a particular product for that and we will undertake to do all that calculation. So in, in a nutshell, that's how we classify it so that it becomes organized in terms of how we have as a business structure within the company itself. Now I had a few slides about Sharia screening and so on. I thought, okay, I don't have to teach uh, the, the, the IIUM of what is Sharia screening, right? So I've now removed all of those slides. I'm sure you, you know what is uh, uh, Quran and the Hadith, the sources and so on, so I'm not going to go into that. But from a business point of view, from a Dow Jones point of view, where do we place uh, Sharia screening, right, as a business? So it comes under the social ethical screening. Let me find if I can get the mouse on. It should come up here now. Right, so this is the social ethical screening. And on one hand, you have the faith-based uh, screens, and on the other hand, we call SRI, okay? SRI in the industry or in, in capital markets stand for socially responsible industries, okay? Uh, in Malaysia, you may also have another word we call the CSR, right? You use CSR here, more? Uh, one? Okay, corporate, yeah. So CSR or SRI would refer to the same. And, uh, and Bursa is doing a lot of work now in, in SRI and CSR, um, sort of like screening and for companies to keep up to CSR. I'll come to that in a short while, right? So let's go on the faith-based side of the discussion. So if it's faith-based, then basically you could look at what are the various sort of um, um, guidelines that the different faith has in terms of what is acceptable and what is not acceptable, right? The halal and haram in, in the different religions that they have. And you can now derive maybe from Islamic sources, which is the, uh, from the Quran, the Hadith, of what is halal and haram, and what is permissible, non-permissible, from the Hindu and the Buddhist perspective. We call this the Dharma. Uh, and then from Christian sources, uh, they have also what is permissible, what is not permissible from Catholic Protestant uh, uh, teachings as well. So therefore you can derive 
different sort of uh, universe and constituents that make it okay now on the right hand side you have something similar on the SRI which is basically what are SRI screens and if you look at it you will find that it's almost similar to Sharia screening okay avoid of alcohol gambling tobacco arms firearm pornography are all screened out okay and the only difference between the Sharia screening and the SRI screening is that in the SRI screening they allow financials to be included financials means banks in the Islamic uh, uh, Sharia screening because banks uh, uh, you know a big a substantial amount of their business comes from riba from riba based uh, products so it's interest based fees and therefore we remove them out and include only Islamic banks into that index itself so th so they would have the SRI index would have the financials and the Islamic indexes will avoid the financials that is the major difference other than that it's almost identical okay and what SRI would also have to do is uh, companies that are now selected not only go through the business screens they also have to show evidence that these companies take care of the environment what is the corporate policy with regards to the use of paper what is the corporate policy with regards to the use of water and how you use recycled paper, how you minimize wastage, environmental concerns, how you support the green movement. Uh, and it must be clear corporate policies that have been um, uh, included in, by the management and, and it's, it's there in the annual reports. Only if companies go through that and there's also like a test, they have to annually audit to say that these companies have actually uh, complied with these screens and only then will they be included in the SRI uh, sort of like um, index itself and the net result is you have what we call green investing